Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, California Weather Watch. Today is March 7th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery with the air mass characteristics overlay here. You can see this cold air with the purples and the reds, this cold trough dug out over the west coast of North America, continuing to bring snowfall to central and northern California. That's going to continue for the next couple of days. You can see the warmer air mass already starting to nudge its way across the Pacific towards the state of California. It's going to bring an atmospheric river with it. We're going to rise the freezing levels and start to melt some of that snow pack coming up here. Hopefully the flooding isn't too bad. We'll take a look at those details here in a moment. Looking at I-80, if you can avoid travel right now, please do so because it's pretty backed up out there. Lots of spin outs, low visibilities and whatnot. You can see here, this is Caltrans showing this jackknife semi here, and you can really see the lowered visibilities and, you know, just kind of compact snow and ice on a lot of the higher terrain out there. And this is looking at rain forecast here in National Weather Service Sacramento. And you can see these freezing levels really going up towards six to 8,000 feet. Major impacts possible. You get the flooding potential and mud and rock slides out there as well. And National Weather Service Sacramento busy at work this morning. Lots of good graphics out there. You can see the snow falling here over the next couple of days. But of course, we're going to raise that snow level and start to melt some of this stuff. Hopefully, it's not too bad out there. But have that heads up. We're looking at some moderate and major impacts coming up here, folks. This is flooding possible here. This is flash flood condition potential here. There's slight across much of California here and we'll look at the impacts here in these more of these maps here later on through the video but you can see the threats out there as well and you can see some of these amounts coming in here. The northern Sierra and foothills here two to seven inches. Northern Shasta County two and a half to four inches. A lot of rainfall incoming here folks. Now this is atmospheric rivers and I want to highlight this because I get a lot of interesting comments here. It seems like People get overly worried when I mention atmospheric rivers. It's just a legitimate scientific term. It's been used for a while. Now we're just talking about the amount of vapor transport that moves across the planet here. And it's based on duration and the intensity of that vapor transport here. It's a legitimate scientific term. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to get too worked up about. It's nothing that somebody just made up to scare you. It's a legitimate term here and we use it commonly in meteorology. Now looking at current hazards, you can see winter storm warnings across the Sierra Nevada here, Northern California winter weather advisories as well. This continues the slow pressure center in the trough open over the northwest portion of North America here, and it just continues to bring this winter weather conditions here, but the freezing levels are going to rise here, folks. Day one through three winter storm impacts here, and again, if you can avoid travel for the next day or two, I'd probably advise on doing so. Now taking a look here, here's the integrated water vapor transport. This is what atmospheric rivers are made of here. And you can see, we saw that on the infrared satellite imagery that moving towards the west coast here, and you can see kind of a sinister looking atmospheric river is gonna try to raise these freezing levels here. And I'm hoping kind of some of those cold air can continue to work its way in here so we don't you know raise them up too much. The problem here is that some of this is going to be still falling as snowfall. Then uh, we have uh, additional systems coming up later through the period as well that are going to continue to impact the state here. So we may be kicking the can down the road a little bit here because we're going to have this flooding potential with such a huge snowpack across the Sierra Nevada and some of the higher terrain well on into probably April here. And hopefully, we, you know, the atmospheric rivers will start to calm down by the time you get to April, most likely, or at least they'll move northbound here. But if we can continue to kind of dodge these bullets here, maybe keep things a little bit cooler and the freezing levels a little bit lower, we can at least reduce the flooding impacts here. But as it is now, we've got a couple pretty strong atmospheric rivers likely coming into the area here that are going to cause some pretty big disruptions and impact a lot of people here. Now, taking a look here, this is that trough carved out over the west coast here. And if you put that into motion, you can see that southwest subtropical jet coming towards the state here, really raising the freezing levels up quite a bit across much of the area here. But then we're, you know, I've got hope that maybe we can keep things a little bit cooler in between systems there at least to try to alleviate some of this melt. But then you can see additional systems as we go on into the forecast shown there. Now, taking a look at the GFS hot off the presses this morning, here's that trough open across the region and snows continue. But here comes that southwest subtropical jet stream and moisture into the region here and plenty of moisture associated with it with the rising freezing levels. Although it does show some of this still remaining a snowfall for some of the higher terrain, which would be a good thing but you can see not you know it's still a lot of rain a lot of precipitation coming in with that and another concern of this also is that you're dropping rain into the snowpack up there and whatnot and then you're dropping very heavy snowfall on top of houses and businesses that are already really loaded up with snowfall and there's been some pretty big roof collapses up there as well so that's something to keep in the back of your mind if you can cl clean your roof off 
it's now is the time to do so. Now take a look here. This is the GFS total precipitation in inches, 12Z. Put this into motion here, and this is that trough continuing to bring the moisture in. And then you'll see the subtropical air start to come across the Pacific here. And there it goes. By the time we get on towards Thursday afternoon, it's going to be impacting the state here. And you can see the big precipitation amounts coming across the region there. So it's likely to be high impact flooding for some people. It's not going to impact everybody. But again, think about the people up across the higher terrain there. Try to help out your neighbors if you can because some of these impacts are going to be pretty big for some people although this is not you know the one in 100 year flood across the state of california you know you want to keep things in perspective here but that does not mean that future systems aren't going to really dive into the snowpack and melt it and cause huge flooding downstream we'll continue to watch those systems as we go over the next few days as you can see some really pretty heavy precipitation amounts showing in the extended gfs here now we're out about 10 days right there and you can see some Actually, we don't even have to go out 10 days. If we back up you know, towards 190 hours, you can see some huge precipitation amounts across some of the higher terrain shown there. Now, this is the European. This is the pr uh, probability map here. This is 24-hour precipitation equal to or greater than 2 inches of precipitation. As we put this through, you can clearly see the atmospheric river start to roll in here and bring this precipitation amount. So you can see across some of the higher terrain coastal regions as well. Very high confidence that you know uh, more than two inches is going to fall in a 24-hour period over these areas here. And then as we go out into the future a little bit more here, the next system starts to roll in and we get those probabilities as well. And those are likely to uptick here as we get closer to the event. Now taking a look here, this is the GFS hot off the press, the 16-day uh, precipitation anomalies here. And you can clearly see we're pegged off scale for some of these areas. We're well above, going to be well above average here, uh, you know, for California here through the next couple of weeks for many areas. Southern California are kind of right on the fringe here as we go. And some of this... Uh, uh, you know, the precipitation total has been waffling back and forth towards Southern California, back north towards Central California. So it could increase down across Southern California, depending on, you know, what the model runs show. We'll continue to watch that day by day. You know, it's it's kind of lower confidence down there versus Central and Northern California, as you can see on some of these maps, though. Now, this is looking at uh, Truckee Tahoe Airport. If you notice... This doesn't spike above 10,000 feet here like it did yesterday. So maybe some colder air hanging around. It's still above freezing down there on the surface level there. But that's better than what it was yesterday. There was more uh, warm air available here in the cross section on yesterday's map. Now this is looking at Blue Canyon here. And again, the European as of last night is still showing these impressive precipitation totals as we go on in through early next week coming up here. This is Blue Canyon. This is the GFS cross section here. And you can see 700 uh, millibars would be about 10,000 feet here. So you can see that warmer air definitely coming in here, but hopefully things don't melt off too quick and the rainfall doesn't cause the flooding to be extreme across the area. Now this is looking at day three. This goes from Thursday morning to Friday morning here. And you can see the slight risk of flash flood conditions here across Central California, including the Sierra Nevada there for day three. And again, this could be upgraded here in the next day or so. Here's day four. This goes from Friday morning to Saturday. Not much relief here as that atmospheric river continues to traverse, traverse across the region here. This is day five, Saturday morning through Sunday, and this could be upgraded here as well. We'll continue to watch this. And we're going to have additional systems moving through the future here. And so, you know, Cross your fingers and hopefully we can dodge these bullets one at a time here and we'll see how this goes. But right now, if you guys didn't hear, we are now officially out of La Nina conditions across the Central Pacific here. You can see we've gotten a negative 0.2 here. You got to be at negative 0.5 to be technically in La Nina conditions here. So we are out of La Nina here and that is continuing our transition into neutral and then eventually El Nino conditions most likely as we go through the summer and on through fall. And this is showing that trend here. So if you, once we went above this negative 0.5, we were out of La Nina conditions. So we're in neutral now. And you can see the models trending that towards maybe a moderate El Nino coming up as we go through summer on into next fall. We'll see how this trends, but models have been doing really good with the transition out of La Nina here. If you've been watching my channel for the last few months, we've been going over these and it's done really well. And so no reason to doubt it at this point. And this is kind of a typical ocean transition that it does. It will go towards, you know, it goes from La Nina for a year or two, then it goes back to El Nino and neutral and back and forth. So it's about time that we come out towards neutral and El Nino conditions for sure after having three seasons in La Nina conditions. 
So yeah, we will go ahead and do this again tomorrow. I may do a live stream at some point today or tomorrow. We'll see how this goes. I do not work. Maybe I'll do another video update here, depending on what the models are showing here. But it's likely that this atmospheric river is on its way. The freezing levels are going to rise. There's going to be flooding impacts for many people across the state of California here. We just have to cross our fingers and hope it's not too bad. And yeah, we'll watch this day by day. Um, I'm going to do a weather station giveaway here. This is the first um, kind of uh, update that I'm giving on that. So if you want to click join below and become a member of the channel, you'll automatically be entered into that drawing here. So I'm going to give away one of those Tempest weather stations here. This is just kind of the first notification for that. I'll probably do a video on that, you know, coming up here just to let everybody know if they want to join the channel. You'll automatically be entered there, and I'll do a giveaway for that weather station. So just kind of giving you a heads up for that if you would like to join. Help support the page too as well. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll do this again either tonight or tomorrow with an update, and I will talk to you guys then.